Decent homes for all. It's what social housing is all about. But achieving that aim is becoming harder than ever. This is where James has been sleeping for the last three months, his uncle's sofa. He's 43 years old and out of work. He's applied for social housing in Gateshead and is waiting to see if he'll be allocated a place to live. Why can't you rent privately, for example? I can't afford to rent privately. They're asking like for bonds of like £300 and £425 rent in admin fees, so I wouldn't be able to afford that. What is it like having to sleep here? It feels disgusting. Like I'm lying on the sofa and like if anybody comes to the door, that's it. I've got to get quick, quickly ready and then go and answer the door. So, they're very, very, very disrespectful. It's not a place for, for people to rely on. Council houses have been offering reduced rents for a hundred years, but housing stock has fallen by a third since the 1980s after Margaret Thatcher gave tenants the right to buy their homes. No, Julie, this is lovely. Not enough properties have been built to replace them, certainly not at affordable rates. This is a private development in Middlesbrough, but the council here is now planning to build new social homes for the first time in 30 years. There are areas in Middlesbrough, but also brownfield sites um, that are owned by the council that could be used to develop affordable social housing um, for rent or to buy um, to suit a very diverse need of our current and future residents um, and that's essentially what the principles are it's about putting people's needs for housing before the needs of profit the pressure on social housing is of course related to the fact that many can't find somewhere to buy or rent privately the housing crisis that we hear so much about from down south is due to a shortage of properties and also hugely overinflated prices although those issues do affect parts of our region it is largely a different market here and perhaps our greatest challenge is improving the quality of our housing. That's clear with thousands of privately owned empty homes here. So the property has been empty for 10 months. This flat's previous owner died. It doesn't have central heating. The new landlord is getting a grant from Newcastle City Council to help do it up so it can be rented out. There's a whole raft of individuals and families looking for places to live and we need to have a, a choice of you know, um, opportunities for them, I suppose. And as part of that whole mix, um, this would provide a significant uh, contribution to that. Over the last three decades, councils have handed the majority of their social homes over to housing associations. The North East's largest is Gen 2 in Sunderland. In 2016, 2,500 of its properties failed to meet decent standards. Dawn and her husband are both disabled. They've rented this flat from Gen 2 for the last three years. They say a slow response when water came into a bedroom this spring was an example of the landlord's lack of care. It was running over the top of this shelf, down the wall. It's caused problems with mould and peeled off wallpaper, which they'll have to sort out themselves. All the, the windows need to be double glazed. And in actual fact, I mean, when the men come out to work on the, the, the houses, on the roofs, etc., they all say it needs to be, they need to be re-roofed. Mm. And unfortunately, Gen 2 just will not spend the money. Gen 2 told us it apologises if its service didn't meet expectations. A building surveyor will now visit to assess their home and it's on target to get all of its properties up to standard. Elsewhere, plans to regenerate estates have drawn controversy. 500 homes could be demolished and rebuilt in Newton Acliffe, despite many residents' objections. After the Grenfell Tower fire last year, the charity Shelter has launched a commission looking at the experiences of social tenants around the country. I think we will hear from people that they feel unfairly stigmatised, um, isolated, and that social housing is kind of seen as a dumping ground. Um, that's no good because not only do we need uh, a lot more social housing, um, we also need it to be a pleasant place to live. The government's due to set out its plans for the future of social housing soon. From our region there come demands for thousands more affordable properties and more respect for those who call them home. Tom Sheldrick, ITV News.